and it's finally time to activate the windmill. And yeah, I just realized I forgot my water bucket, so I just have to break my legs. And yeah, I think it turned out pretty great. Create is an awesome mod for 1.18.2 that lets you build contraptions for mining, farming, crafting, collecting liquids, and more. And the newest update added the best part, trains. So let's first start off with the new ore this mod adds. So it adds the zinc ore and its deep slate version. And once you spelt it, you get this chalky zinc ingot. <laughs> and yes, please don't ask me why it's so fat. And then we have the other naturally spawning blocks. So we have the acerine, we have the crimsite, we have the limestone, the ochrum, the scoria, the scortia, and the viridium. And yes, all of these are found at the same levels, except this one, which is found in the nether. And yes, you can actually make decorative blocks out of these, and I absolutely love the red one. And by the way, there's other uses for this, so you can actually get some materials out of them, but I'll get to that later. And here we have the andesite alloy, and yes, this is gonna be very important, since it's basically everywhere in this spawn. And the way you craft it is with two andesites and two iron nuggets, and you could also replace it with some zinc nuggets, and yes, they're also chunky. <laughs> I don't know why all of them are so thick, but now let's actually get to the interesting stuff. So before I show you what this hand crank does, you will have to know that almost everything in Creed uses something called rotational force. So rotational force is, uh, yeah, what I just described, rotational force. And you can see almost everything here is rotating. You can see the entire row rotating. And yes, we're gonna activate this side soon. And by the way, this is how you craft the hand crank. So the way you craft it is with three planks of any type and one andesite alloy. And by the way, you may have noticed that once you go over this, you'll notice something that says hold W to ponder. So hold W to ponder will show you everything you can do with this. But I'm not going to actually use this since, yes, I am going to be showing you this. So for the hand crank, all you want to do is just right click and you should be able to just crank it. And yeah, I find it absolutely funny how I can be so far from this. And though apparently it might be telekinesis, but now I'm just going to shift and then right click. And you're going to see that it's going to go the other way around. And this is how you place it. You just place it like a normal block. And there are other ways that you can produce rotational force without having to, yeah, do manual labor. So next we have the water wheel. And the way you craft this is with wooden half slabs of any type. And one large cogwheel in the middle. And don't worry, I'm going to explain the cogwheels later. And the way you craft these is with two planks of any type. And then one shaft. And the way you craft a shaft is with two andesite alloys. And it gives you eight of these shafts. And now I'm just going to open the glass over here. And then I'm just going to right click over here. And you can see the water wheel has been placed. And now all I'm going to do is just place some water over here. And you'll notice that starts spinning. And by the way, the more water you get onto it, the more it's going to spin. So each side counts like this. So this is one side, this is one side, this is one side, and this is the other side. The corners don't actually count. And you have to make sure that the paddles are facing the right direction. So I'm just going to show you what I mean. So I'm just going to break this and just change the order. And you're going to see that now it's not spinning as fast. Because you, you're spinning it the wrong way, you donkey. And yes, I, I didn't mean it like that. I, I, I'm not trying to offend anyone. So here we are just going to break all of this. And we're just going to stack it. So this will produce even more rotational force. And it can have more stress on it. So I'm just going to show you what the stress does later on. But I'm just going to do this. And here we go. So I, it's just going to start spinning. And this is producing much more power. So it is easy expandable and now i'm gonna show you how to make this water wheel more powerful than i'd ever imagined so we're, let's create unlimited power by deleting these blocks right here and now we're just gonna place some soul sand over here at the bottom and now let's just place some waters to get the bubbles going so here we go all of the bubbles are going and you can see that it has started spinning much faster and here we go it is at its peak efficiency and you can also accomplish this by placing it on its side like this but that is not going to actually create as much efficiency as this right here because you can't actually stack it 
And will you place this if you're crazy enough to do this anyway? It's just by right clicking straight on it. So if you just do this from the side, uh, yeah, it, it's still gonna place it because it's already down. But if you place it uh, for the first time, this is what it's gonna do. It's just gonna be a normal water wheel. So next we have our currently not existent windmill. And yes, you will actually have to build this from scratch. And don't worry, it's not gonna make your brain explode because it's actually pretty straightforward. So let's start off with the windmill bearing, and this is what will generate your rotational force. So the way you craft it is with one shaft, one stone block of any type, and one wooden half slab of any type. And now let's just place this boy down, so we're just gonna right click on the ground and yeah, just place it like a normal block. And if you want to make it a vertical like this, you can do that, but I'm gonna make myself a horizontal windmill. And now, let's just get some of the sails. And the way you craft this is with two sticks, one andesite alloy, and one wool of any type. And this gives you two of these white sails right here. And you can also craft it by using a sail frame, which is crafted by putting a white sail in the crafting grid. And yeah, you just get the sail frame. I don't know why the flip you would do this but you can also just you use shears but yeah i still don't understand the concept of ever needing that and by the way depending on which design you're gonna go for in the windmill you will probably need some super glue and the way you craft this super glue is with one iron sheet and don't worry i'm gonna make a section dedicated to making the sheet so i'm not gonna leave you hanging and then we have an iron nugget and two slime balls and who do it was so easy to make super glue i wish that was that easy in real life so i wouldn't have to buy any so now i'm just gonna place whatever block i want right here and now i'm just gonna place the sail by right clicking right next to it and you'll see that the sail is already here and now it's pointing in different directions so if i point it to this edge right here it's just gonna point an arrow in that direction. If I point it over here, it's gonna point in that direction, if that makes any sense. So now I'm just gonna place one more. And now we're gonna place up to eight of these because that is the bare minimum you need to get this working. And since why do, when do I say bare minimum, I, I usually just say minimum. So here we have it. So we have a complete windmill. And now you just want to right click down here. And here we have our spinning windmill. And yes, I know this is absolutely slow. And you can actually make even better ones. So here's the uh, vertical wind turbine that I've always had. But now it is animated. And yes, it's always worked. But it wasn't animated. And then we have this right here. So you can just make some really nice windmills. And let's actually stop this. Because I want to show you something so if you have a big windmill like this and you just want to dye it you can just right click with your favorite dye and it should dye it but if you keep holding it down it's just gonna do the entire sail so you know what let's just do this entire sail for no reason all right so now that my sails have been stained red okay yeah I know I, I do that would sound really really bad so now I'm just going to right click to stop it again. And yes, there are different designs. And let me show you why you would probably need the super glue. So I'm just going to destroy all of this. And yeah, yeah, I didn't want to remove that. So I'm just going to place some wool down. And you'll notice that there's something wrong. So once I try and start it, it's not going to start. Because yeah, first off, it, it, this is, it, it shouldn't actually really start. Well, I'm just going to show you how to get it started. So you just want to use your super glue. So you just want to right click on one corner and right click on the other corner and it should glue them together. And now let's just do the exact same thing for the side so we can have eight of them. And now let's just right click and <laughs> here it is. It's working. Although this is probably the ugliest windmill I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I absolutely hate it. And if you want to unsuper glue this abomination, you can just right click on the windmill bearing to stop it. And then you just left click and that should get rid of all the super glue. And just to prevent any confusion, you don't actually need to super glue the sails once they're on something that has super glue so you can see that only these trap doors are super glued but once i started they're gonna start spinning because yeah apparently they already have their own super glue oh yeah they're stitched together which is something i didn't notice and there's something that you should also know about the build lid and that is you can only build with 2048 blocks 
And yes, this is almost near the limit, so yeah, I, I actually measured it and had a lot of issues getting that set up. And the final basic rotational force source is the creative motor, and don't be fooled by its size, even though it is tiny, this tiny boy is absolutely powerful, and the only thing that can match it in survival is the steam engine, which I'm gonna cover later, since yeah, it is a little bit more complicated, and now I'm gonna show you what this boy does, so I'm just gonna get right behind it, and I'm just gonna point straight at it. And now, I'm just gonna use my scroll wheel on my mouse, and now I'm gonna set it to its maximum speed, and yes, this is the absolute limit, just look at how fast it's spinning. And now, I'm just gonna bring it into the negatives, and it's gonna spin like a maniac in the opposite direction. And there's one more thing, so if I go behind this while holding down shift, and then scroll, you'll notice that it can make precise adjustments, which is pretty helpful since if you didn't notice, it goes at insane scrolling speeds of eventually and yes you can also set this boy vertically and it records going vertical and there's something that i wanted to show you about placing blocks so i'm just gonna place this creative motor facing that way and you're gonna see that its motor side is facing downwards but if i hold shift it's gonna point upwards and yeah that is a very helpful thing you can do all right so now i'm gonna show you how to move your rotational force to wherever you want and let's first start off with the shaft and yes it isn't useless and actually has other uses apart from crafting recipes but now we're just gonna break this one we're gonna place our creative motor right here increase it to uh yeah 64 that is not insane and yeah pretty decent and now we're just gonna right click on the block right here and you'll notice that connects automatically even if it's spinning and it looks like friction is gonna absolutely destroy your hands and you're gonna see that there's an arrow pointing in this direction and if you keep clicking you can keep building it longer and longer all right so now that this has been shortened i'm just gonna place another creative motor in the opposite direction and you're gonna see how wrong this goes so yep the creative motor exploded even though it is one of the most powerful sources of rotational force so we're just gonna destroy this one we're gonna place it again but now we're just gonna go into the negative so let's just go to negative 64 and why, why was I shifting? All right, so here we go. I'm just going to set it to the exact same speed. And this is a really great way to add more rotational force to the system if you want. And here are some of the decorative options. So yes, never do this without any decoration. I, I would destroy anyone who did that. So here we have the wooden bracket and the metal bracket. So the way you craft the wooden one is with three sticks, two planks of any type, and one andesite alloy. And then we have our metal boy, which is crafted with three iron nuggets, one andesite alloy, and two iron ingots. And now I'm just going to show you how these work. So I'm just going to place down one of these and you'll see that it has been placed down. And you have to make sure that it's facing the right direction or else something like this will happen. So now I'm just going to place it again and let's place the metal one. Yeah, I, I just absolutely love how these look. And now let's move on to the next decoration which is the metal girder. And this is the encased edition. So the way you craft a girder is with three iron sheets and three andesite alloys. And you get eight of these which is really great. And now I'm just going to place one more rod. And here is how this one looks. So it's just going to look so amazing. And there's something that you should keep in mind. So this one won't actually work for vertical ones. So we're just going to place a vertical shaft. And it's not going to do anything, so yeah, it is acting pretty dumb in that case, but you know what, uh, yeah, I, it's understandable. And now we have these casings right here. So only these two will actually work for your shafts. And there's actually a third one, and I'm going to show you each one of them. So we're just going to create them from scratch, so we can actually place them. So we're just going to use the andesite alloy right here, and you're going to see that has turned into andesite casing. And then we have the brass one. And we're just gonna get the brass casing and then we have the copper casing right here but this one won't actually work for your shaft so this is why i'm just showing these two right here and now i'm just gonna place these okay you know what yeah if they obey and let me just grab some of these so we're gonna grab both of these and now i'm just gonna encase these and you can see that this one has connected yeah yeah i already showed you that over there and now we're just gonna connect it over here 
and you're gonna notice that it has been encased and we can also do it in this direction so let's just do this and you can see that they have also attached and yeah i already showed you that with this so i'm not gonna show you that again and what the heck i'm gonna show you again all right so let's move on to the cogwheel and the first one we're gonna start with is this tiny boy which is just a regular cogwheel and the way you craft it is with one shaft and one plank of any type and now let's just place this boy over here where there's rotational force and now it's just gonna start spinning and you'll notice that once you got this corner right here on its hitbox you can actually just place another cogwheel like that and you can just place it in any direction you want so let's just place one over here and now we have a cogwheel over here and now let's talk about the large cogwheel which is yeah obviously the big boy and the way you craft it is with one shaft and two planks of any type or just a smaller cogwheel and then you just feed it a plank as a steroid and it turns into the large boy and now i'm just gonna place one over here and yes you'll notice that it won't place the theater one no matter how hard you try that yeah that's what's gonna happen so don't even try it so the way this actually works is you just go on its side and it's just gonna place it like this so yeah you have to make sure you're hitting its uh, hitbox right here and did i just have a miniature stroke i, I think i did and now I'm just going to place one more. But from what I showed you earlier, you can't do this because, yeah, they're spinning in opposite directions. And they just tear it apart. And you'll notice that, yeah, it does change directions uh, depending on where you're facing. And now I'm going to teach you how to change the speed of your rotational force. And there's a few reasons why you might want to do that. And that is because of these picky machines like the mechanical mixer and the mechanical crafter over there that require specific speed. And there's also an advanced way to do this, which is that machine over there. But yeah, that's gonna be later on the showcase, obviously. So let's start off the simple way, which is with cogwheels. So we're just gonna place this tiny boy right here. And then we're gonna place this large boy right here. And you'll notice that this boy is spinning much slower since, yeah, this guy has to spin a lot more to move this fat punk over here. And, whoa, uh, uh, what am I even doing to these cogwheels? And, yeah, there's something else that, uh, th that happens, and that is its stress capacity actually increases. So that means that it can handle more machines. But, unfortunately, that means that it's a lot slower. And there's one thing that I forgot to show you, and that is you can actually case these cog wheels so here we're just gonna case this one and we're gonna case this one and doesn't that look absolutely beautiful and yeah you can't actually use the copper casing like i mentioned earlier and now i'm gonna teach you how to do the opposite and that is just by placing a big boy right here and then a spa boy and you'll notice that this is using a fraction of its power and it's making this guy spin like a maniac and yes you can take it one step further so here you have a system where I have increased the stress capacity. So here we have a small boy right here spinning a big boy. And then behind that is a small boy spinning a big boy. And you, you already get the idea. And it's going to go super slow. But now I'm just going to add some crushing wheels. And yes, I'm going to teach you about the crushing wheels later on. All right, so I did it. I reached its stress capacity. So let's just break a few more. And you'll notice that goes back to normal. But let's just place this last one. And you'll notice that a bunch of black smoke comes out and that means that you've already reached your limit and now i'm just going to show you what happens with the opposite so i'm just going to break this so you can see how tall this is and now here we have one spinning at light speed so we have a big boy connected to a small boy and then behind that a big boy connected to a small boy and so on and the second i place one thing you'll notice that it is literally spinning at light speed this is literally sonic but the second i play something else you'll notice that it has stopped spinning and isn't that an incredible difference just look at how high i can go with this and this is just uh, uh, this is absolutely pathetic also yeah you can place casings of these big boys right here so let's just place some casing and doesn't that look absolutely beautiful but you'll notice the issue and that is these don't actually have any outputs so you will have to actually destroy the gear you already have to get it to have outputs and then you just place whatever you want. So in this case, I'm going to place a copper valve handle and yes, I'm going to show you what it does later on. It's just basically another source of rotational force. 
to the alert case this and you'll see that there's actually an output on this but unfortunately the other side won't have an output so you will have to once again destroy your gears and then just place whatever you want over here and now let's just place the casing and now we have both outputs next we have the gear box and this is just a miniaturized version of what i just showed you with the larger cog wheels and the way you craft this is with four cog wheels and one andesite casing or you can just place a vertical one and it'll turn horizontal i don't know how that works so you probably just flip it around but here we go i'm just gonna place stuff on it and you can see that it's just working exactly like i just described and here we have the vertical gearbox which is literally just crafted by placing a gearbox on its side and yes even though it's probably a little bit obvious what it does i'm just gonna show it to you anyway so here we go the exact same thing just on its side so next we have the encased chain drive and this is a little bit different from the vertical gearbox because if you haven't seen this if you place another vertical gearbox you can see that they're spinning in different directions but that is not gonna happen with the case chain drive so the way you craft this one is with one andesite casing and three iron nuggets and now i'm just gonna place another one and you can see that it's spinning in the exact same direction so yeah this is pretty awesome and let's just place one more and you can place as many as you want and yes there's a chain in there so there, this is why you can do that and there's also the advantage that you can just do this and so Separated. so we're just gonna place them down and, and here we go and <laughs> get yeah, it they just have another stroke i should probably see a doctor but anyway there's also something that you should be aware of and that is you can't actually place it down here so yeah you could uh, you can only choose what direction and here we have the mechanical belt and this is kind of like the encased chain drive except it can actually move items which i'm gonna show you later and it can also go diagonally which is pretty awesome so now I'm just gonna go up to a shaft, I'm just gonna right click and you're gonna see some purple coming off it and yeah I know it's kind of like a magenta right I have no idea and by the way if you want this to stop following you the, across the entire world you can just go back to the shaft and then you can just shift right click and here we go it should disappear and yeah you didn't have to do it right next to the shaft but you pr probably get the point already and now let's actually do this so we're just gonna go up to this shaft over here and you can see that it has turned into shrek green and wait um why why am I even saying that? And here we go. It has finally connected. And if you want to break this for some reason, you can just break one piece and they'll break the entire thing. And now I'm just going to make the shortest one possible. So let's just put a shaft on the wall. And now let's just grab our mechanical belt. And here we go. We have the tiniest version. And if you want to make this longer, you can just right click in front of it and it should make it longer. So now I'm just going to stretch it out all the way. And I'm going to show you that you can insert shafts no matter where it is on the belt. And you can also case these, which is pretty awesome. So let's just case some of these. And doesn't that look beautiful? I just absolutely love the brass one. And yeah, you can replace it by clicking on it again with the other casing you want. And you can customize your belt even more if you want by just grabbing your favorite die. And then you just want to right click and it should do the entire belt for you. So here it is stained in red and yeah why does it it always sounds like i just murdered something and then i'm just gonna right click with this slime and you can see that it has been overridden and i'm sorry i have no idea how to actually uh, get this back to normal so all i know is just break it and here we go that is the best solution for absolutely everything and here we have the diagonal belt like i was telling you about and here we have the vertical belt and here we have the laying on its side belt. Yeah, I don't know what to call this. And now I'm just going to decorate it a little bit so you guys can see that you can decorate it no matter which direction it's facing. So here we go, it's been decorated. And now I wanted to show you something that you should know in survival. So I'm just going to go into survival really quick. I'm going to place the belt. And as you can see, I have only used one of these belts. And I'll only use one of these dies. Actually, 
I, I didn't even know that. You don't even use any of the dye. And you can also use the brass casing on this. And it won't it won't even waste the brass casing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I had no idea about this. But I'm now going to break this. And now here we have the belt back. Next we have the speedometer. And we have the stressometer. So you can plug this in into any rotational force system. Because yeah, it obviously does have a shaft going through it. And first, let's start off with the crafting recipe for the speedometer. So the way you craft these speedometers with one compass and one andesite casing or you can just place a stressometer and it'll become a speedometer so yeah I have no idea how that works. And next we have the stressometer. So the way this is crafted is by putting a speedometer in the crafting table and it becomes a stressometer. So yeah it's by work of magic. So first, let's start with the speedometer, which is probably the most obvious one. So this shows you the speed at which things are going. So this is almost maxed out, as you can see. And now I'm just going to place it here. And you can see that this is almost the minimum speed that you can go in this mod. And let's go to something a little bit more decent. So how about we just put it over here. And you can see that we also have a reading from this. Now let me show you what the stressometer does. So I'm just gonna place it over here next to its speedometer. And you're gonna see that it's almost completely at its maximum capacity. And now I'm just gonna place one more crushing wheel. And now you have angered the gods of stress. So now I'm just gonna break it because yeah, I feel like this thing is gonna probably murder me by sleep. And you can also detect it across the entire system. So here we go. We have stress across this entire system. Because yeah, we're using the water mill over there. And wait, there, uh, did I just forget what it's called? The water wheel? What, what is wrong with me? So now I'm just gonna not destroy this. And now I'm just gonna show you how this is gonna work. So let's just place one. And you're gonna see, yeah, the, 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 this dude is interrupting. So here we go. You can see that it's at its minimum stress. And now I ju I'm just gonna keep adding. And you can see that it's still gonna add to its stress. So let's just keep going. And you can see that it has barely gone up. Because of this system right here so now i'm just gonna place it at its max and here we go it is angry again now since the next few things that i'm about to show you require some new materials I'm gonna show you how to craft them using the mechanical press. And I don't know about you, but I, I would love to have a mechanical press at home. Imagine everything you could crush. Imagine all the possibilities. But anyway, the way you craft it is with one shaft, one andesite casing, and one block of iron. And now I'm just gonna right click back here and it should automatically line up with the near shaft. So here we go, uh, the, the trap door. Uh, okay, I hate the trap door. So here we go, you can see that now it's rotating and now you will need something else called the depot. So the depot is crafted with one andesite alloy and one andesite casing. And yes, I'm sorry if I sound weird, my nose is bothering me right now. So all you want to do is just place the depot like one block above the mechanical press. So here we go, one block of space. And you can also do it the other way around so you can have the depot first and then shift and right click and it should place it right above. And yeah, you uh, will actually have to line it the first one you place. Or if you already have a shaft, that's probably not going to be an issue. There's also a few other surfaces where you can crush things on. So you have the conveyor belt and you have the basin, which I'm going to show you. So here we go, five andesite alloys. And you got yourself that. But now, let's do the important stuff. So let's place a piece of gold on here. And you're going to see that just comes down and crushes it. So here we go. We have a golden sheet. And now we're just going to place our iron on the conveyor belt. And yes, you will have to throw it. So here we go. It's going to come down, crush it. And now we can just pick it up or just let it go. So here we go. It, it's been stored. And yes, I will show you how to actually do that. And you know what? Let's get rid of this sheet right here. So I can show you that changing the speed does actually affect this. So here we go. We have some iron on there. And we're just going to throw this entire stack. So um, yeah, I know it's a psychopath move. But here we go. The entire stack is on there. And now I'm just going to make it go insane. So here we go. How about we just put it to max? So here we go. 
Yeah, do, do not put your fingers in there. It's still in touched on it. It's probably pretty obvious. Now, I'm gonna show you something else you can do, and that is craft with the base. And so, we're just gonna create some andesite. So, let's just throw our flint in there, our gravel, and let's fill it up with some lava. And here we go. It has created some andesite, and you can see it floating right here. And you know what? How about we just put the rest of it? So, how about it was a lot bunch of flint and it, I just throw my lava bucket in there, okay? You know what? Let's just grab everything. And here we go. We have andesite casing. Uh, andesite. <laughs> Don't you see andesite casing? And by the way, you just want to right click to get everything out of here. And with our fresh metal pancakes, we can now craft a few new items. And the first one we have is the wrench. And the way you craft a wrench is with three golden sheets, one cogwheel, and one stick. And yeah, I'm sorry if I sound weird. It's been like a week since the last cut because the exams and stuff. And yeah, I don't have to talk about it too much. So now, let's go up to the first thing that I'm gonna use the wrench on. So let's start with the creative motor. So I'm just gonna go up to it, and now I'm just gonna right click, and it's gonna rotate it, and you'll hear some uh, weird noises coming from it, so that is the wrench working, and now it should twist it in any direction you want. I don't know why you can't do this with your hands, but you know what? The wrench is almighty, so now I'm just gonna go right on top of it, and it's gonna flip it. You gotta be kidding me. You know what? Let me just deactivate this dude so here we go we can finally do it in peace so let's just go in front of it let's be right above it and now i'm just gonna right click and it should rotate it and this seems should apply for anything else yeah i should have used it on this so how about we just go up here and we just rotate this and now it's no longer functional so now I'm just gonna turn it around, and here we go, so you can do that with a ton of other blocks, including the, this right here, and you know what, how about we just go to grinding wheel first, so let's just flip this dude over, and here we go, so yeah, even if it's working, you can still flip it over, but it's a little bit different with these right here, so here we have the water wheel, we're gonna try to right click, and nothing. But if we just put it out here, we should be able to rotate it. And you know what? Yeah, we have to get on top of it. So here we go. We can rotate it in any direction we want. And if it's lying down, how about we just get it to lie down and do die down. So here we go. It's lying down. Yeah, I spent way too much time on that. But now, let's go over the other things it can do. So you may have noticed that there is a symbol up here. And yeah, let's actually activate it again. So here we go. It's active. And now you'll see that there's a thing right here where just shows its direction so if you scroll using the wrench it's just gonna make it go in the other direction so yeah the physics don't make sense but you could do it if you want to uh, yeah in case you accidentally made a mistake with this but now i'm just gonna show you what else it could do and uh, what, what the flip just happened to me but here we go so let's just right click on the shaft itself and it's gonna get rid of the brackets but if we click on it on another decoration like the metal girder, it's just gonna get rid of it. And yeah, you can actually use the wrench to get rid of these things right here by just right clicking in the square. And you can also just remove the, 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 the dudes. Okay, you know what? Uh, apparently they don't want to be removed. But here we go. Actually, you just have to click outside on the actual casings. Or here we go. It has gotten rid of the shafts in there. And here's the last thing it can do. So let's just go up to a cogwheel and let's actually break it by hand. So this is what happens if you break it by hand. It's going to take forever, but this is where this comes in. So here we go. We're just going to shift, right click, and it's going to break it immediately. And here we go. It's in our inventory. And yeah, it does put it straight in your inventory. So how about we just do it to creative motor? Here we go. It's in our inventory. Let's just put this in our inventory. And by the way, once you're turning blocks like these ones right here they may just not act like you would expect so here we go it's just doing this i don't know what the flip it's doing but yeah you can rotate them if you want next we have the engineer's goggles and i absolutely love these things and you're gonna see why in just a second so the way you craft these is with one golden sheet one string and two glass of any type and now i'm just gonna shift right click it's gonna go into my helmet slot and doesn't this look very fashion now i'm just gonna go over there and let's actually use this thing so here we are at the water wheels and now i'm just gonna look at them and you're gonna see that it tells me how many stress units are actually being generated 
So if I look at something like this, it's, there's zero being generated. And even if you see some of them moving around like this, did, did I just move like I was drunk? So here we go, it's at minus, that minus zero stress units. I don't know how the flip that's possible. But you know what, Let, let's just ignore that fact. And now let's actually break some of this glass. Because there's more details to the speedometer now. So if I put the speedometer on here, you'll see that it's telling me that it's going at 20 RPM. So this is really helpful. I, I, yeah, this is why I love these glasses. But combined with the speedometer and the stressometer. So here it's telling me how many stress units are left. So here we have 1,280 stress units. And how about we just activate this right here. So yeah, let's use our wrench to put it back on. And it's obviously going to go overboard. But here we go. So it's high. So it's using 100%. So there's zero stress units remaining. And how about we just do this guy right here. Alright, so let's place another load. And you'll see the particles too, which is pretty awesome. And now I'm just gonna place three of these. And let's place the speedometer and the stressometer. So you'll notice that it's on a different color right now. So here we have 40 RPM. And it is moderate. And we also have 320 stress units left over. And you'll see that it's in yellow. So let's just break one of these and now it's on green even though it's lying by saying it's on yellow right here and with things like windmills you can just go to the windmill bearing and it'll tell you how much stress units it's generating so this is generating 4096 and this windmill is creating 8192 stress units so yeah you can make them op but it will never beat the creative motor so let's just place it down and it's generating 262,144 stress units so this thing is absolutely insane and there's one item i almost forgot so if we go out here into the wild you'll find yourself a wild valve handle and the way you craft a valve handle is with three copper sheets which i showed you earlier it's made by crushing your ingots and then you just place one and the side alloy under it and it should give you a copper valve handle and you can get other colors if you want just by dyeing it so you can grab whatever colored handle you have and then put your dye on it and it will just change the color and the way it works is exactly like the hand crank so you just right click to spin it in one direction and then shift right click to spin it in the other direction and this is the most inefficient source of rotational force so yeah it's absolutely pathetic next we have the toolbox and the way you craft a toolbox is with two golden sheets, one trap chest or normal chest, one leather, and one cogwheel. So now I'm just gonna break it, and now I'm just gonna right click so you guys can see how it's placed. And then I'm just gonna right click, and is it this animation pretty cool? But now I'm just gonna go over here. I'm just gonna drop off my items. I'm gonna pick them back up and you'll see that there's a zero right here. So that means that's gonna be picked up if I press this button right here. But how about we wait and take this away. So I'm just gonna left click and it should disappear. But now I'm just gonna do it again for these items. So how about we just put the golden sheet and I'll also put the cobblestone. And yes, all the cobblestone I have here is the limit so you can only place up to four stacks of each item. But now I'm just gonna left click on here and it should store all of them. And yeah, let me just show you what happens. So if I try to store more, nothing is gonna happen unless I just put it over here. And in that case, it's just gonna absorb it too. Now to exit the toolbox, you just hit escape like a normal chest. And I still love the animation. But now I'm just gonna go into survival. I'm gonna break this and here it is in my inventory. So now I'm just gonna take it over here, place it down and yeah. That is something I'm working on with Horsican, but I'm gonna show it to the other part of the showcase. But now, here it is, everything is in here. And now, if you want to actually customize this, for example, you want the red toolbox or any of these other colors, you just put the die next to it, and they all look nice, but I obviously love the red one. And even though it seems a little bit random, the last thing I'm gonna show you is the tree fertilizer. And the way you craft a tree fertilizer is with one bone meal, one coral of any type, and two flowers of any type. And the way this is different from a normal bone meal is if you use normal bone meal in the place where the plant can't grow. For example, right here, 
you're gonna just use it forever. But if you use the tree fertilizer, it's gonna grow no matter if it has to go through everything around it. Just look at this thing. It literally just replaced the glass and everything. So yeah, I think that is gonna be a mess to clean up. So that was it for the first episode of my Create Mod series. So yeah, it is gonna be a series. And I'm gonna keep covering the rest of the showcase, obviously. And yeah, I'm sorry if I've been taking so long in releasing this video. I've been having a little bit of confidence issues, but I'm, I'm, I'm solving them like a beast. And also my classes. So yeah, I'm slowly gonna get better at making the videos a little bit faster. I don't know. I, I, although I can't make promises. And yeah, it was really fun. So next episode, I'm gonna be showing you a little bit more complicated stuff. And then I'm just gonna keep advancing. And the other stuff is not gonna get more advanced, but it's just gonna be a little bit different. And you know what? Let me stop rambling on. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this first episode. So don't forget to burn that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. If you happen to be enjoying my content, let's try to get to 30 likes or else I'm gonna go to your house and fill it up with cogwheels. And yeah, actually, that actually sounds like fun. No, I'm, I'm not gonna trespass anywhere. And don't forget to have an awesome day or night and see you all later. Bye!